Hi everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Donna and this is Donna Loves Yarn because I do. Um, today is Saturday, October 12th, 2024. And I am back from my little sister's trip to Des Moines. We got back um, on Thursday. We were only gone one full day and two half days, but it was a nice time to get away. It was a nice, nice time to spend with my sisters and we had a good time. We had a really good time. It's never long enough, but sometimes it feels like just long enough, if you know what I mean. So my son is gone. So I thought what better time to pop on here and make a little video talking about my trip, talking about my whips, and anything else that comes to mind. And so with that, again, I wanna thank you for joining me today. Uh, if you're a new subscriber, I welcome you and I thank you for joining my family here. Uh, if you're a returning subscriber or returning viewer, thank you very much for always coming back and watching this old lady and what she has to say and what she's been up to means a whole lot to me. Seriously, means a whole lot. Um, I'm thinking there might not be enough light. This light must need to be charged. It's not coming on. So I've got a lamp over here. I don't want to turn my ring light on because too much, it's just too much. Well, let me, let me see if I can turn it on and then kind of turn it down. Ugh, see, it's still. That's off. That's on. It should go down. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. I think I'm going to not mess with that. Sorry for that waste of time. So anyway, um, as you can see, I'm wearing my poncho. You probably think it's finished. It's not finished. I meant to take it with me on my trip and I completely forgot. I left it down here in the basement and I just completely forgot all about it. Um, but I don't have very much longer to go on it. Um, I haven't really done anything on it since I showed you last, but I thought I'd throw it on just to mention it. Uh, as long as I don't get overheated, I'll be wearing it throughout this video. So my trip. So we left on Tuesday morning. Um, I was supposed to be at my sister's by eight o'clock. I got hung up in traffic. So I didn't get there till, I don't even think I left here till almost eight. Um, I don't think we got on the road till after 9 a.m. But it's only a three, three-ish hour trip. So we got in before noon. So that was good. And um, so it was, it was, as far as I can remember, it was an uneventful ride to Des Moines. Um, I worked on a project, of course. I'm a passenger. What else am I going to do? A three-hour trip across Missouri and into Iowa. What else am I going to do? So on the ride there, I worked on... Oh shoot, I should have written down... I should have written down. Oh, now I remember what it is. I worked on the Lotus Blossom shawl. This is a Moogly pattern, Tamara Kelly. And I got pretty far on it. Um, the only problem that I'm having with it is, and I'm sure others are like me, you, you're going along, going along, going along, and you don't realize that 
the row you're on, you should have done something differently. That's the case here, but I think I can fudge it and it'll be okay. So the increases are in, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven sections for increasing. When you get to a certain point, those increases change and you start adding in stitches and chains to kind of give them like a web look. I don't know if you can make it out on this or not, but right there. So I didn't realize it till I was several rows in that I should have added stitches in these chain two spaces that I didn't do. Dogs are upstairs. I hope they're behaving. Oh, Bean has a aluminum can. So anyway, here it is. But I think I should have started adding these uh, double crochets in the chain two space down here or down here and I didn't. So I'm adding them now um, and it'll be fine. It's not going to change the design that much. I'm getting hot. So um, I'm just going to keep going and uh, my ball of yarn is on the floor. Excuse me. I'm just going to keep going and um, I've got quite a bit of yarn left. I don't know where to put this. If I put it over here, the dogs might get it, but I'm going to try and make sure it's okay. So anyway, I'm going to keep going on it and you know, it should be fine. It should be okay. I don't think it's going to change it that much. Um, but it's really almost, it's about done. I think I've only got maybe eight rows left on it, but it's really pretty. I was hoping to finish it while I was there. And then I was kind of put it, I was going to kind of put it up for grabs for my sisters and whoever wanted it, I was just going to give it to them, but I didn't get it done because I had to rip out, I had to frog back, I think a row and a half or something. So, and I didn't have a needle with me anyway to sew in the ends. So I thought, I'm in no hurry to finish it because I can't sew the ends in. I'm certainly not going to ask them to do it. So, anyway, it's really pretty. I think it's pretty. And I am using Shawl in a Ball in Mindful Mauve. This is not mauve. This is purples and grays. I don't know why it's called that. So anyway, that's what I worked on on the ride down. Um, I think I took three. I took three whips and then I took some other yarn thinking that I, I would want to go ahead and whip out a hat while I'm there. I didn't do that. But I did work on the shawl. I worked on it a little bit while I was there. Um, and so I didn't, I didn't spend a lot of time crocheting while I was there. We were all sitting around the kitchen table. We, were, we played a game. Uh, we ate, we talked, you know, it was, it was a nice time. So not a whole lot of time for a crocheting. So I worked on that on the way there. And then on the way back, I worked on my 24 point star blanket and I don't know how many rows I got in. I think I got maybe three or four rows in. Um, this is from Ophelia Talks, 24, star, 24 point star and I'm just going to use it. I'm going to keep going until I'm out of yarn. 
So I'm using this and this and just alternating them. Um, I think I only have one hank of this left. Or do I have more of this? I have more of one. I don't remember which one. I think I have, I think I have more of this than this. But it's still, I think it's still gonna be pretty good size. You know what, I need to go and get that can from my dog before uh, he has a bloody mouth. Be right back. Okay, no blood. So anyway, I, I started working on that and my, my older sister, there were three of us in the car. My youngest sister was driving. It was us three youngest kids. Get out of there. That went down and then my two oldest sisters came from Illinois and then another older sister came from Washington. So it was us three youngest in the car. That's usually how we do things. And my older sister is in the back seat and she says, Donna, you working on that purple thing? I said, no. And I showed her what I was working on. And she said, you started a new project? No, she doesn't understand. I said, no, I had already started this. I just want to work on something different. You don't want to just finish that one? No. I just want to work on this for a little while. She doesn't get it. Now, if she were to pick up the hobby, she'd be the one to start a project and not move on until she finished. That would be her. That's not me. That's not me. And that's fine. You do, you do your craft however you want to do it. When it. However brings you joy, you do it that way. And that's what I did. So I worked on the blanket on the way back and then I put it down. Um, let's see, what else did, did I take? What is that? Oh, I didn't work on this one. This, oh yes I did. Did I work on this one? Yes I did. Anyway, I think I might have worked on this one on, on the way down. This is a shawl. I can't remember the name of it. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and put it below. Um, but I think this is from Nana's Crafty Home, I think. Uh, oh, this is from... Um, oh, I can see her in my mind. What's her channel called? Anyway, it's called the Autumn Something Shawl or Wrap. It's a rectangular shawl slash wrap. And it's just a really one easy one row repeat. And I'm using a uh, cake of yarn that I can't seem to find at the moment. Oh, here it is. It's a yarn art flowers cake in that. Uh, this is color number 315. And it's basically starts with navy, goes to uh, purple and navy, then it goes to purple and green. I'm not there yet. And then it goes to more green. Then it goes to green and mustard, and just it it keeps going until it ends with like this solid, like a nutmeg color. So I think I worked on that on the way down, and I must have worked on the shawl while I was there. That must be it. So the project that I thought I might start. And I went ahead and, and caked up these these yarns. Was then I want to I I am gonna do it. I don't know if I'll do it this week. Coming up, but I want to do another sea stone beanie. And here's the Rasta. If you saw my last uh, yarn haul, I showed that, and I took both I took both cakes, 
and the appropriate hooks to start that beanie. But I've got another project on my hook that I need to give priority to because my older sister, the one that was sitting behind me in the car, she's been really wanting me to make her a cardigan. And if you've been watching me for any period of time, I had started her a cardigan. It was an Expression Fiber Arts cardigan called the Marine. Well, it ended up too big. So I gave it to my another sister. Fits her perfectly. So I'm still on the hunt for a project to make her. So I don't know if any of you guys have, have seen um, on Facebook in particular, there's an advertisement for what's called a sweater scarf. And this one is actually already made, I believe, and they're trying to sell it. It's a knit one anyway. So I don't remember if it's the pattern they're trying to sell or the actual piece, but it was a knit sweater scarf. It's beautiful. And that caught her eye. And, you know, I can't knit, so I've been on the search for something comparable that I could do. So I have two, one of which well, they're both paid patterns, although I think I might have gotten this one free um, from Expression Fiber Arts. There's another one that's a paid pattern from um, Han Jan Crochet. That one, I like the sleeve construction better, but Shandy's on Expression Fiber Arts, I like the body construction better on it, the, the pattern design on the body part. The sleeves are a little bit wide or bigger around than I want. So I'm hoping that I can modify, I'm hoping I can modify the sleeves because my sister likes a tight sleeve. So this is called Embrasser or Embrasser, um, Embrasser, E-M-B-R-A-S-S-E-R. -S -S I will put a picture of the finished product here from Shandy's website, I'll put that here. Um, because the only picture I have, my ink was running out, so it doesn't look so good. But this is made, and I was kind of concerned about it because it's made. That's another reason I want to do the hand jan one because it starts from one sleeve, works its way across the body, finishes with the other sleeve. So there's no seaming, so easy, so easy. This one, you have to do the body and then reattach your yarn and do the sleeves in the round. But I discovered that because of, of the way that you're making the body, you're making the body from side to side. You know what that means? That means you have actually stitches you can go into on both ends instead of a raw edge which if you've been watching me, you know, I don't want anything to do with a pattern that has raw edges that you have to figure out how to evenly put your stitches into those raw edges. I don't want to do that. This one, is work side to side. That didn't sound good. I don't know if you heard that. I don't know what, oh, I know what they did. I just got a new couch cover. I bet you they pulled it off. I'm going to have to pause for just a moment. Okay, it wasn't what I thought, but it, it had the potential of being something bad. So anyway, back to the sweater scarf. Again, this is from, it's on the Expression Fiber Arts website. I believe it's a paid pattern now. I may have gotten it free when I got it. I don't remember. But this one is done, the back panel is done side to side. So that means that I've got actual stitches here to go into to start the sleeve. And then when I'm finished, actually this is the first part. When I'm finished, I will also have defined stitches on the other end. Yay! So... 
you're supposed to do the pattern is a six row repeat and you're supposed to do a total of 40 six row repeats she calls for a three and a half millimeter hook and a 3.75, I believe. So 3.75 is for the body. The three and a half is for the cuffs. Either that or it's 3.25 for the cuffs. Anyway, she's a loose crocheter. I can tell by watching her. So I went ahead and went up to a four for the body. And it should be fine. And then I have a I think this is a three and a half prim for the cuffs and I'm just going to try to do them I'm just going to try to do them as tight as I can and it's in the round and then you decrease as you go towards the wrist so I am going to I want to get this done fairly quickly so I'm going to try to do five to six repeats every day. If I can do that, and then getting the cuffs in, this shouldn't take me more than two weeks. The body should only take me a week, but I'm giving myself an extra week to, um, to do the cuffs and any hiccups I have. If I can't do, I mean, I don't have a deadline but it's something I want to do for her. Um, it's something I want to do for her. And I'm hoping that I can size it right. The panel, I don't think I really have to be concerned about. The panel will be fine. It'll work. The sleeves, I'm hoping, are not challenging. So, if, if anybody watching has done this pattern and you have any tips on how to tighten the sleeves please reach out to me um, I belong to the uh, group that the official group on Facebook and I know if I have any problems I can I can reach out to people there um, because until I read ahead in the pattern I didn't know whether the panel was worked side to side or bottom to top. So I should have read ahead and noticed that it was it was worked side to side. So I've got that going and um, I'm excited to finish it. I'm using a Art Yarns, Art Yarns, not Yarn Art. Art Yarns is a high-end uh, high-end yarn company and I happened to get quite a bit of this from a local friend of mine. Well, we made friends after I started buying all her yarn. Um, but this is 100%, no, it's not. It's Merino, Superwash Merino, Cashmere, and Silk, I believe, is the construction. I don't have the ball band in here, I tell you, but I know it has Cashmere in it. So I know she'll, she'll seriously appreciate the quality of the fiber I know that but it's an easy pattern um, I'm putting stitch markers every repeat so that I don't have to necessarily count every row um, I'm using my app called my row counter to count the one through six rows and a couple of the rows are similar so it's not a hard repeat and it's, you know, it's pretty short. You know, it's not a long, it's, it's not a really wide section of fabric. Um, so it goes fairly, fairly quickly, you know, but there's still small stitches. And I, I need to make sure that I get everything, pay attention, I still have to pay attention and do it right. I had to rip back a row and a half last night because I wasn't paying attention and I forgot I forgot part of the repeat and I couldn't have fudged it there was no way I could have fudged it so there's that um, I still have I started to work on the escape shawl 
in the car. This is what I was going to do on the way back. But because the stitches are too small, between my tremor and the shake of the car, there was no way I was going to do it. So I worked on it for maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes, and I put it away. And my, my little sister, the driver, said, you're going to put it away? I said, yeah. Between all the shake and I can't, I can't do it. It was, it's too hard. So that, that is really all I brought down here with me to show you guys. Um, I will, I will probably be working on the embrasser today. I just haven't gotten into the, into the headspace yet to pick up my hook, but I will, I will. Um, what else is going on? Uh, oh, I forgot my coffee. I went and made my coffee. I was going to bring it down here and I forgot it. I totally forgot my coffee. Um, today is National Yarn Day, or I Love Yarn Day, thanks to the Yarn Craft Council. They have, they have made... It's, it's what, like the second Saturday in, Octo in October, which that's what this is. I think the second Saturday of October is yarn, yarn, National Yarn Day. So I happened to get an email from Jimmy Beans Wool. And if you get their emails, you know what their, uh, what their special is for this year. And I just had to do it. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, but I did it. So it's a O-snap bag. I don't know how big it is, but it's probably this big. O-snap bag, which I don't have any of those. I've heard good things about them. And four one-of-a-kind or single lot Malabrigo Rios. Well, Rios is like what, $16 a hank, I think? 16 to 20 a hank. So it's like, okay, I get yarn and then a free bag, basically. So even if, even if the hanks are 16 a piece, there's your $60, $64. So, you know, 15, can you find Rios for $15 a hank? I don't know if you can. So that's basically, you're getting Rios for $15 a hank and a free bag. Tell me how you can beat that. So I went ahead and, and bought that and then I still had some stuff in my cart. So I went ahead and threw that in there. And that was, I believe four, is it four or five? Four hanks of Malabrigo Mequita, which I do not have. But I want to compare the Makita with the Madeline Tosh Merino Light. They're very similar, and I want to compare them and see how, I bet you they're very similar. Malabrigo's made in Peru. Madeline Tosh, where's Madeline Tosh from? I don't know if it's, I don't know. I'll have to see. I have some Madeline Tosh. I had to look. But, um, yeah, so I caved on that. I've had that, that Makita in my cart for probably a month, maybe more. Um, I had some other stuff in there. I, they have the Malabrigo, or they have the Madeline Tosh Merino Light, and they are on sale for $22, I believe, normally 30 or more. But I thought, no, I've got these... Um, I've got all these unicorn tails, plus I found a seller on eBay that is auctioning four separate lots of 24 unicorn tails. And figure I paid like $350 a piece for the ones that I got. So I have a high end that I'll pay and still be happy with the price considering they're like $8.50 a piece. So I'll go so high. I've bid on two lots so far. Or did I buy, bid on three? I think I bid on two. The 
Auction is over in four days, so we'll see how that pans out. I'll probably lose them. Somebody knows what those things go for, and they'll buy them. Shipping is like $5 and change, so um, right now the high bids are hovering around between 15 and 20. One of them is a little over 30 for 24 unicorn tails. 24. That's pretty good. Do the math. You know, even if I even if I got them for seventy dollars plus shipping, that's like three dollars, three dollars a piece. That's not bad. So, you know, I have no business buying any, but my idea is I'm gonna string up all of my minis. I'm gonna string get a piece of twine and I'm gonna string them up and decorate either down, no, I don't want to bring them down here. I don't know what kind of insects are down here, especially, I don't, no. I would love to decorate it down here, but I don't think it's a good idea. Because I don't know what's down here. I don't want bugs crawling on my yarn. Spiders building webs on my yarn. No, no, I'm not doing that. So I'm going to get some twine and I'm going to, I'm going to, um, string them all on that twine and then I'm going to decorate my yarn room upstairs with it. And when I do that, I'll make sure I show that to you guys and share it. That'll be fun because I'm getting the Aberdeen's Wool uh, Christmas box that has 24 minis in it and one full size. That's supposed to ship the second week of November. I am super excited. And you know what? Heather still has like only 10 boxes left. So you guys ought to head over there. They they're ac they actually have 15% off today. 15% off today for yarn day. 15% off. You could go and purchase that uh, Christmas box and get your 24 minis and there's a, a shawl cuff and there's she's giving you a little bit you know a few th little extras to go along with it um, so you guys ought to go do that there's only 10 left and she's so so over the moon thankful that that we have come out and support for her small business and you know she's been having health issues um, so, you know, we should be we should be supporting her so she can keep her sheep and continue doing the beautiful work that she does. We all love the the mystery boxes. She's still doing those. We all love the pickle jars. The Tangled Poets are beautiful yarn. And that's what the Christmas box is, is Tangled Poets. So head over there, you guys, and help support Heather and her family. Um, as she struggles with these health issues that she's having. So I'm going to scoot out of here. I want to I want to thank everybody who watches this video. I appreciate you all. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be a giveaway coming in the near future because I'm getting closer and closer all the time to my 1,000 subscribers. I actually got an email from YouTube saying that I have reached the first level um, for AdSense. So I'm waiting for, for them to, you know, go through that whole process. They said it could take up to a month. So I'm waiting for that. Um, you know, if you've been helping me with watch hours, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Um, you know, I, I didn't come on here really with the intention of making an income. I really didn't. And I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing. If, if I happen to get to that point where these videos generate a little bit of extra cash, great. Great. But that's really not, not my focus. My focus is to share my love of crochet and my love of yarn and you know maybe do a little teaching along the way providing a little information along the way 
since I'm still fairly new myself. So I remember what it's like trying to learn this craft and the helpful little things that I wished I'd had when I was starting. So that's really the, the purpose for this channel. And I've made some great friends along the way. You know who you are. And I appreciate every single one of you. I really do. Because of all the things that you could be doing, you're watching me. So how great is that? I love it. I just love it. All right, so I'm going to head back upstairs and make sure my dogs aren't tearing my house apart. By the way, um, because I was gone, we had to crate them, crate the dogs, you know, for like nine hours a day. You guys, they did beautifully. They did beautifully. I couldn't believe it. I, I had our um, Simply Safe camera downstairs. Um, perched on top of the dryer so that my son and I could both check in and watch them um, and they did great it was so surprising but here's something that happened on Thursday <laughs> on Thursday the morning we're getting ready to you know pack everything up and come back home I, I do what I was have been doing I checked in to make sure they were okay it was what time was it? It was probably, I don't know, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m., something like that. And I bring it up on my phone and I had to zoom in because I wanted to be sure I was seeing what I was seeing. You guys, the crate door was open. I couldn't tell if it was one or both, but it looked like one crate door was open. And I was like, oh my gosh. All I could think about was my rabbit and how easy it would be for Bean to get to that rabbit. I don't need to say anymore. So as soon as I knew I saw what I was seeing, I texted my son. I said, crate door open. I was just trying to get it to him as fast as I could. Crate door open. So he calls me, first he starts messaging me and then he calls me. I'm home, mom. I wasn't feeling good this morning. I had stomach problems all night and so I decided to stay home. <sighs> Boy, was I relieved. Oh my gosh. He said, you didn't check the doorbell camera to see if my car was in the driveway? No, I saw the crate door open and I freaked out. I didn't, he never stays home. He don't, he doesn't call in sick. He's generally very healthy. I don't know how many times in the almost year that we've, we've been living here together. I can't maybe once or twice that he's stayed home sick. He just doesn't do that. So, of course, I didn't think that was the problem. So, thankfully, he was he was home. Everything was fine. Oh, my gosh. But other, other than that, the dogs did beautifully. Um, I'm seeing a lot of flickering on my, cam on my phone, so I'm hoping that doesn't come over on the video. I don't know. It might be the fluorescent lights that's causing the flickering. If it is, I'm sorry about that. So anyway, with that, I'm going to let you guys go. We're already at 40 minutes, so I'm going to let you go. That's got to be the fluorescent lights. Even though I'm looking at them, I don't see them flickering. So, all right, I'm going to let you go. Thank you again, you guys, for coming in to see me today. I appreciate you. And uh, I don't know when I'll be doing another video. I'm not expecting any yarn anytime soon, but I may I may pop in and do a Whip Wednesday to show you my progress on the Embrasser. So today is Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. That's, that's four days at six rows a day. That should be another 24 rows if I can stick to that plan.
Or no, that would that wouldn't be twenty. Would it be twenty four rows? No. Yeah, it would. Six times four is twenty four. So another twenty four rows. Which is a little bit less than what I have right now. So that's that's probably when you'll see me again. All right, with all that said, it's time for me to go. My son is messaging me, and uh, I don't know what it's about. I just saw something about a Jack Russell. So hopefully he's not wanting to bring home a dog, because <laughs> the answer would be no. All right, I'm going to go now. Thank you again, and we will see you on the next one. God bless each and every one of you. My prayers are always with everybody that's dealing with these hurricanes. God bless you all. And just know that you you guys are are in our thoughts and prayers. And I really mean that. I've, I've been praying for people that are in trouble down there. Um, so I hope everything improves soon. But, you know, God was with you when, when, uh, Milton went through because it could have been a whole lot worse than it was. And there were a lot of people praying, including myself, that Milton would weaken. And he did. So praise God. Always praise God. Even in the hard times, we have to praise him. We have to praise him. Continue to praise him. Even in the tough times. We have to and love each other, and just be kind. But remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. And I will see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.